husband Tim. I'm sorry, I didn't mean you, Olivia. Sorry, 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 sorry Tim. And Tim. And Tim. 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 That, so that's the lady's parents right there. So uh, it's neat to see the, the young adults going through life, right? And you're seeing them. And I know for, she'll share sometime her testimony, but her going to Life Pacific University, a Bible college there, was not part of her plan. How many has gone through life that your plan was not your plan? <laughs> right? I, so that's same for me. In my senior year, I thought I had everything mapped out. I was convinced that my life, I got everything mapped out, ready to go. I mean, my college, career, marriage, family, it was all mapped out. And it was clear, clear for me, and perfectly planned for me. How many have ever done that? Like, they had it planned. Hey. But little did I know that, that God had another path for me. And through a series of, well, I don't want to say unfortunate, a series of events, it created a detour for me. And not just one detour, but several detours. One of the things that... I've come to learn patience with is another season that New England has that the rest of the world doesn't, and that's cone season. Those orange cones <laughs> that just detour after detour after detour. That, that's my life, detour after detour. So in my life, you know, it went from, it went from P to T. You guys, we're not A to Z, because it, it just went from P to T. It went from permanently, perfectly planned to temporary plans <laughs> at a blink of an eye. Yep. And so what I thought I had a permanent vision of in life was not permanent. It just wasn't permanent. It, it, it changed. And instead of, instead of my vision to be a doctor, I found myself settling into a life that was completely like, I don't want to do that, and that's the life of being a Marine. I settled into it, and in, uh, not only did I settled into, settle into it, but I got really comfortable in it, because I thought, oh, I could make a career out of this. So it went from being a doctor, like, I'm going to do 30 years in the Marine Corps. That was my thought. I'm going to do 30 years in Marine Corps now. I, I loved it. I fell in love with it. I, I was like, yeah, I could do this. I could do this for 30 years. <sighs> the, very, the very sense of permanency that I thought I had there, that I was clinging to, gone again. That changed. And then other plans that started coming my way, that changed. It, it changed several times. How many has been there? That just things have changed so many times. And I was starting to think about it. I was like, why do we cling so much to the idea of permanence? How many of you have ever done? You just don't want to cling on to permanence, right? Jobs, relationships, uh, even, even our, our physical appearance. <laughs> we, we just want to cling on to that permanency. Do you guys want to know Why? is because as people, we crave stability. We crave stability. We crave this thing that, well, like, that is going to be the way it's going to be for the rest of my life. And you know why? Because that, permanent, that permanency in our lives, oftentimes we relate to, you guys ready? Security. We relate it to security. But that's not true, is it? It's not. And the Bible offers a complete different perspective when it comes to permanency. You guys want to take a guess where? Through the whole thing. <laughs> but we're going to be in 2 Corinthians. So if you would turn with me, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting at verse 16. If you don't have a Bible, I think they're going to put it up there. And, yep, there it is. It's up there. Are we there? I'm going to try to, I'm using my, my spare glasses because my other glasses broke. So now, and these are weaker, so I have no, I'm going to have to, and my arms are short. I have T-Rex arms, so I'm going to try. You guys ready? 
Here we go. Oh, that's all oh, good. Thanks. Good. Therefore, we do not give up. You know what? Underline that. And then circle therefore. That's important. Therefore. Therefore, we do not give up. Even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. Amen. And if you have a highlighter, you might want to highlight that. For our momentary light affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. So we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Highlight that, underline that, bold that, star it. Continue on in chapter 5. For we know that if our earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal dwelling in the heavens, not made with hands. Indeed, we groan in this tent, desiring to put our heavenly dwelling, since when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. Indeed, we groan while we are in this tent, burdened as we are, because we do not want to be unclothed, but clothed, so that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave us the Spirit as a down payment. So we are always confident and know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. In fact, we are confident and we would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Therefore, whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to be pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may be repaid for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. You guys see where the temporary is to the permanent? And Paul is talking about this life, life through temporary beyond and beyond. And it's called eternal. In Acts 18, we learn that Paul had planted this church in Corinth. And he lived there for about a, a year and a half, and then he leaves, and he puts Timothy in place there and some other leaders. And then after a while, the church just goes, psh, loses it. They forgot what, what the teachings were of that Paul had left. They forgot about the gospel of, of the kingdom of heaven and Jesus. And so a number of conflicts, a number of problems start to grow and fester in the church. And with that was his, was his relationship with them. So there was like a serious breakdown with his relationship with the church in Corinth. So Paul writes 2 Corinthians. He writes them a letter, and he does so to restore relationship and urging them to, urging them to repent. He's calling them to repentance. And most of them did. Most of them did. Remember, repentance doesn't mean, oh, Lord, forgive me. It is to turn, right? To turn back to God, to turn the way you, you think, and so most of them did repent. They did turn their, their ways back to God. And as he's writing this letter, he also wanted to affirm his commitment to that church. Here's why. And I think you guys have gone, you've, I'm the fourth pastor through here. And oftentimes, oftentimes when there's a change of pastor, sheep are like, oh, no, not another one. <laughs> not, not another change not another change there is no permanency in who god appoints the shepherd of church because the permanent shepherd is jesus christ himself all right and we got to focus on that so paul's pretty much saying look i'm affirming you but i want you to know i'm going to support you but i want you to know that there's nothing permanent there's no one permanent there except for jesus christ and what he he does in affirming his commitment. He shares, he shares how he and his team of people, his team of Jesus followers, his team of teachers, his team of evangelists are all suffering for the cause of Christ, not just for Corinth, 
but for the entire gospel, for, for the kingdom. And with it, he says that, if you go to chapter the pre- previous chapters, he says that they suffer because they're carrying about their bodies the death of Jesus. And he likens it to what? You guys remember? Jars of clay. Because they're fragile. And he says that we're carrying these jars of clay, that very death of Jesus, so that they can display not what they know, not to display good behavior, but what? To display the work of Jesus Christ. And with that, he is saying, look, I want you guys to understand that, that while we're carrying these jars of clay, we suffer. We suffer. And he's saying, look, we suffer in the outer In the outer man, we're suffering, but it doesn't have to lead to what? It doesn't have to lead to inner suffering. It doesn't have to. Mindset, the way we think, the way we process things. In fact, what he does, he explains is that that the outward suffering, the outward suffering, we can either let it bog us down, the outward suffering could dictate. Remember last week we were talking about how much Emotion drives our our choices. How much emotion drives the way we think. And so Paul's saying here, our outward emotion, our outward things that we're suffering through, we've, we've been given a choice. We either can think that those are permanent sufferings, whatever is going in your life is permanent, or you can focus on this. You ready? You can focus on the external thing, and this is this, the permanency of God, the eternal life with God. And if you're going through those temporary suffering, you change your mindset into this, you know what? This is temporary, this is temporary, and I'm going to change the way I think through Jesus Christ. And remember, we were also gifted the Holy Spirit, to help us through those things. And what happens when you do that, now you can intentionally not just live for yourself, but now you can intentionally live for Jesus Christ. Now for us, it's, as Christians, it's Jesus Christ. For, for those, there's people who intentionally live for a greater cause or something higher, a higher being. You hear that. Well, I don't believe in God, I don't believe in Jesus. But yet when you look at their life, life, down into the nuts and bolts, you'll hear him say stuff like, I want to do something greater than I am. I want to live for a better cause. Well, there's no better cause than living for Jesus Christ by sharing his love and sharing the truth in what he says. And what does he say? He says, I am the truth, the way, and the life. No one can get to the Father except through me. And so that's what we live. We live with that hope. We live with that permanency of God. Now, Paul, when he's writing this letter, he doesn't, he doesn't say to ignore suffering. He's not saying, oh, ignore it. it. It's almost impossible to ignore it, isn't it? It is. And so what he's, what he's saying is this. Look for hope through those temporary and beyond things that cannot be seen. And where do we look for hope? Through Jesus Christ. See, the things of eternity and the eternal work of God, when we read it from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it's a lot of suffering stories, isn't there? A lot. In fact, Jesus Christ suffered the most for us so that we can have eternal life. And then Paul explains that this, this focus, this change of mindset on the eternal things, the eternity, what it does is it caused him and it can cause you to desire, desire, desire being with the Lord. That's permanent. And in that gives the hope and great courage to live life abundantly, to live life abundantly. See, the Apostle Paul, he, he faced hardship and suffering, and there's many other examples in there. And through that, that 
facing of hardship and suffering, we can learn from this powerful message, the letter that he wrote to the Corinthians. And what can we learn? And here's what he taught the Corinthian church, and it extends to us today, is to how, live, how to live through temporary and beyond. To live through temporary and beyond. Because here's the thing, as we temporarily suffer, you guys know it's temporary, right? As we temporarily suffer, we have to learn and recognize that God can use those difficulties to renew the way we think and refresh the way we live. We were singing some songs. Satan has no hold on you through those suffering. He has no power over you because he is not more powerful than the Holy Spirit. And for you to think that our suffering is, is permanent, is giving access for the enemy to toy with your mind. Because the only permanency there is, is our God. He is eternal. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There is no one like Him. And so what happens is that when we live that life, when we focus on this life of going through temporary and beyond, we, we get to see the glory of God through it. How many of you have ever suffered through something temporary and just plowed right through it and seen God's glory? I know there's many more. You've seen God's, he is faithful, he is faithful. So why do we ever think that other things might more be more permanent than the others? My friends, this world is not our final destination. I hope you know that, right? This world is not our final destination. It's a, it's a temporary stage, if you will, where God shapes you for eternity. It's a temporary place where God transforms you for eternity with Him. With Him. Living through temporary and beyond, here's the secret. It, it lies not in clinging to what's fleeting and what, what fades away, but clinging onto God's love and living a life that reflects God's love. So if we doubt what, through our temporary stuff that we're going through, we doubt it, it doesn't reflect God's love. What does it reflect? A fear. It, re it reflects hopelessness. It reflects that we're more trusting of what's offered in the world than what God has already offered you. And what happens is when we rethink things from temporary and beyond, we live a life that's more joyful. We live a life that's showing more love. Look, our, our path, may, it may twist and turn and have some bumps and a lot of orange cones or orange, what are those round things that stick in your way and it's like, another one? And half the time, I take a detour and it doesn't tell you where to go. It makes you, like they assume, you know, what side streets to take. Our God isn't like that. My friend, we have to understand that our final destination is not here on earth. Our final destination is with God. And that, my friends, is eternity. That's eternal. That's permanent. You know, there's a saying that, um, that the only permanency is change. How many of you have heard that before? The only thing permanent is change. But you guys know that even change is not permanent? You guys realize that, right? Because change is change. <laughs> it's not permanent. Nothing is permanent on this earth. Nothing. Everything is temporary. Even this earth is temporary. You guys, you guys ready to hear this one? Heaven is not yet, temp is not yet permanent. Heaven is temporary. Well, how do we know? Because in Revelation 21, 1, God reveals 
And John shares, he says, a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem is what he saw. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. That should help you realize that the only permanency is God. Not the things he created. The creator is permanent. Not the things created. And Hebrews 13, 8, you look in the back, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. God is permanent. God, an unchanging and eternal God. Here's where eternally is for us. Ready? He promised to dwell with us. He promises to be our God and that we will be his people. That's Revelation 21, 3. Imagine this. Imagine this, my friends. Imagine the difference it would make if we shifted our mindset, if we changed the way we thought, living with the knowledge that the anxieties of this temporary world pales in comparison to the eternal joy that waits for us. God. Imagine that. Well, no, don't imagine it. Know that. Know that we will see Jesus Christ face to face one day. And that, my friends, will be permanent. It's not temporary. The way to get there is temporary. But getting there is permanent. So we change the way we look at things in our suffering. It might be easier said than done, but my friends, embrace the challenges that come our way and see them. See them as opportunities to grow closer to him. See them as opportunities to spiritually mature so that it shapes us. Are you ready? Shapes us the way God wants to shape us so that he can use us on this earth temporarily for a permanent life with him. Amen. 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 It, I, think it, we, uh, I think all too often we let the things of these world make us believe that they're permanent. When nothing is permanent. You know, even my height, at my highest height, I was 5'2". But that's not permanent. I went to the doctor for a physical. I, I, I'm 5'1 and 3 quarters. I know some of these are going to get worse. I'm like, I, I, told, I, told my, uh, I told my physician assistant, I don't have even a millimeter to spare. And here's what she said. But your body is changing as you get older. Nothing, nothing's permanent, my friend. So we must live life through the temporary beyond. Why? Because beyond the temporary is the permanency of our God. Right? So what can we do as we live the life? We can learn to shift our mind. And that word, again, is repent. <laughs> Shift our mindset. So instead of dwelling on, on the anxieties of the temporary, instead of dwelling on the suffering of the temporary, cultivate these thoughts of peace and, and contentment and joy about the eternal. And when I say the eternal, I'm talking about capital E, eternal, God. And intentionally live intentionally live with the knowledge that one day, listen, one day, not if, that one day we will be face to face with Jesus Christ. Amen. One day. It's not if, it's one day, it's going to happen. And I hope that you get this perspective, this new perspective that through the temporary and beyond, we're transforming to be more and more and more like Christ. And as we become more and more like Christ, we take on his characteristics. We take on his traits. And one of it is this. I don't remember ever reading in here 
where Jesus showed any fear. Did you? So don't fear change. Don't fear change. Don't get paralyzed by change. Embrace it. Embrace the change as an opportunity for growth. Take it on for an opportunity to be renewed and refreshed and just shake it off. Because you, you navigate this changing life of yours. God might put some detours and some bumps, but because you have volition, you have choice, you guys ultimately, ultimately navigate through that. So do you want to navigate through with this expectancy of this everything's permanent? Or navigate through temporary and beyond into eternity? Eternity with God. That's the ultimate home for us. That's the ultimate life for us. And yes, look, it is better the air on this. It is better to err on this, that God is at the end. It is better to err on that than to go, oh, this world is just, ah, there is no God. Well, I, I think I'd rather err on trying to, go, okay, I'm going to change my mind. There is a God at the end, so I'm going to live like my life that there is a God at the end. I'd rather, because what could go wrong if you're living a life knowing that eternal life is with God, then living a life like, oh, there's nothing after that. Because if you go the other way and think, like, oh, I'm going to live life the way I'm going to live because there's no eternity, and think that this is permanent, or even if you accept that there's only temporary life and then psh, blackness at the end, what if, just what if, what if, there is God at eternity. You're better off to err on that than go, oops. Wake up, it's like, oh, there is eternity. Because the way that God explains it is this. It's not that death is permanent. Because even our physical body is not permanent. And even the physical death of our body is not permanent. Because Revelation tells us this, that there will be a day when he takes up our bodies and makes it whole again. Get a new body. A new body. My friends, let's find, let's find hope and a purposeful living through and beyond the temporary. Knowing this, that our permanent home our permanent life is with our eternal God. Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you that you are a God who is faithful. We thank you for a God who loves us so much that you gave your one and only begotten Son out of love. And you don't force us, Lord. Thank you that we get to choose even when you choose us. We get to choose. And so, Lord, we choose to live a life today. We choose to live a life intentionally for the eternal and going through the, the temporary and beyond because you gave us a way and you also empowered us and gave us a helper through the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, I pray for blessings for those here or listening. May you bless them and anoint them, Father God. May you not only shine upon them, Father God, but may they see your joy as they live, live and walk a life intentionally for you. Lord, constantly remind them through word, through prayer, through others, through thought, through dreams and vision, that this life on earth is temporary and you will wait them 
you await them with permanency, with a life with you. As you are our God and we are your people who will dwell among us. Send us out, Father God, knowing that permanency in you. And all who agree, say amen. amen. So in the name of Jesus Christ, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may you go out blessed, anointed, and living life abundantly. Amen? amen. All right. See you guys downstairs. All right. Love you guys. Peace. Peace. Nations are his feet. He breaks the bow and bends the spear and tells the wars to cease. Almighty oh, one of Israel, you are on our side. We walk by faith in God who burns the chariots with fire. and great, you lift your voice to speak. The earth, it bows and all the mountains move into the sea. Oh Lord, you know the hearts of men and still you let them live. Oh God, who makes the mountains melt, come wrestle us and win. I know my God is in